explain their working class and our class. This is a very important talk. And uh, now the Indian working class facing lots of uh, problems and uh, mainly political uh, problems. So for me, actually, uh, presenting the matter in the English also problem. So I have not that, that much uh, uh, flexibility in the in this long way. Uh, still, I want to try to present the importance of the issue and uh, find for the uh, communicating the moment. The thing is, so after successful struggle of the Indian peasantry against anti uh, farmers bill <laughs> uh, adopted by the Modi government. So in the, all over India, in the, each and every sector, there are uh, 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 new uh, assurance, there are new opportunities. So even every sector, people are struggling for their, uh, protecting their rights, their livelihood. So especially in this upper section, like Dalit, Adivasi, women, and other uh, social strata, their fight for their rights and their housing. But in, in Indian uh, political situation, the role of the Indian working class, so who lead the Indian working class, they must know the what is the character of the corporate attack on the Indian working class. So now the central government led by RSS. BJP, they are propagating for their reform is on the uh, Indian working class. And their uh, media, their mainstream media, their website, uh, they are propagating. So, according to them, now they impose the uh, new policies, new reforms in industries on working class in the name of uh, development, improvement, and fair business or uh, fast moving business. So in this time, we must understand uh, the historical root of uh, reforms on the working class or industry of the law. We must remember, we must uh, uh, consider. Before going to the matter, I want to express some more to you. The workers, the Indian working class have the extreme uh, struggle for their rights. Their, uh, Against colonial system, against this colonial system, there was a very big fight, there was a very big long run struggle against the uh, <coughs> colonial system. Simultaneously, for the better work condition and base condition and revenue. After October Revolution, the whole situation was changed, and the situation of India also changed. And uh, there was a uh, very progressive movement, national liberation movement, and uh, socialist force of extension nation, and national liberation movement, and movements for so democratic rights all over the world. Yes. In Indian working class also, part, part of this international force. So mainly after Second World War, so first after Second World War, uh, there was a situation increasing the socialist forces in all over war. Socialist forces, socialist camps, and proletarian forces, national liberation forces. There was an increase. After Second World War, uh, 
the world improved system temporarily step back and uh, they think their strategy and tactics for the exploitation they adopt the actually liberal policy they adopt the liberal policy <laughs> with competing with the socialist system what a international capitalist imperialist system there was a liberal policy in the second world war uh, in every very not only india in every place there was a first round uh, reforms in the industry or uh, reforms on the work in indian uh, labor law then so after 1947 when the power transfer was there after 1947 Between that time, actually, 1940, 50, the number of uh, industrial acts, <coughs> major acts, minimum major acts, and all, almost all important acts are adopted by in that time. So after that, uh, so anyway, so after long run struggle after the working class and uh, liberal policies from the international industry. capitalist capitalist system in all over india all over the world the first round reforms first round uh, labor laws are accepted and uh, accepted for implementation but no implementation there was a law section in india there are uh, 34 central law so many are number of state laws are So when the uh, Modi government uh, proposed to you for the new labor reform or new labor force, they are defining, they are justifying the new changes. So according to the Modi government, so on uh, new labor laws, they are definitely uh, this is a pro worker, a pro industry, pro national development. This is one question. Second question is: This forty-four central labor law, basically, are exercising the forty-four central labor laws, and uh, so many state laws are really hurdle for the and the labor industrial situation and state development. This is the reason uh, told by the Modi government. Then, uh, so Modi government prepared the draft of the. New labor laws, new labor force. It was discussion in the Rajya Sabha. They adopt the four labor force in the name of they are proposing in the these new labor reforms or new labor force for the worker, better industry, better industry relation. They are they are proposing. So one thing is uh, very clear: this Modi government continuing continuing the New liberalism, privatization, globalization, liberalization, especially privatization. So one side they are propagating the economic policies or new liberal policies. Another side they prepared uh, new uh, labor reforms for uh, uh, industrial development or new industry development. This is a contrast. There is really big gap. For them, uh, they they want through the uh, imperialism, a corporate system, corporate uh, mode of production. They want remove the so uh, illegal rights of the labor force. Then so the they accept the. Propagate and they adapt the poor labor force. First is actually poor uh, on wages. So previous there are number of independent acts and linking different interpretations for the particular cause, particular interest of the working class. Now on poor on wages is different interpretation and different interest. It means actually the wage security of the working people. And uh, 
so we will increment of the working people and uh, collective bargaining for the big increment of the working people or not uh, uh, really in this course so this is one of the reason i can be actually code on industrial revolution so now so they are saying click code on industrial revolution third one is a code on social security and uh, fourth one is code on occupational safety health and work condition so in the place of party for central law central government adopting the new code labor code till so sangha parivar and their corporate lobby corporate media propagating these four codes are new labor reforms for the welfare of the worker ordinary worker for the people of the industry but we should do a discuss that thing what are the problems section what they want section according to real now after two years pandemic in the name of pandemic there there will be serious attack on the working class especially migrant workers industrial workers transport workers everybody under attack in the pandemic period and after that actually no job security or big security in the production in any sector sector wise or layer wise actually there is no security so now that these four uh, labor codes are accepted not implemented that you see they are accepted but in different way in different state already they for the practice already they for the practice in maharashtra in karnataka and other states uh, they adapt the state uh, act <coughs> and they are implemented so i want to discuss two three aspects so so regarding the new new labor reform what is the effect what is the point of the new labor reform first thing is the uh, uh, worker interpretation work regarding worker existing as secretary there is a different interpretation up to this my this time according to existing law so there are five uh, categories in the worker one is actually permanent second so temporary and uh, third actually casual fourth bodily and uh, fifth one is provisional according to existing <laughs> labor law there are five categories but according to new labor codes <laughs> they had another category that is a fixed term contract so permanent temporary casual badly provisionary plus fixed term contract or fixed term contract employee this is the so new interpretation and uh, new application regarding the worker so uh, i can see that is that is very important so through new labor codes indian ruling class led by the modi sarkar they openly through the corporate capital especially international finance capital so international finance capital who want cheap labor in india and all world country so they want destroy the concept and the definition and concept of the permanent nature of work permanent employment they want to dismantle and destroy the permanent employment this permanent the concept of the permanent employment and the legal rights of the permanent employment also obstacle for the uh, building up the industry or uh, industrial development that is to do the uh, government led by the modi so this is the main thing 
I can do this actually. Uh, you want to destroy the permanent uh, employment system means job security. And uh, they want to destroy the wage system and wage condition. And actually, they want to destroy the social security benefit. So, in labor courts, they, are, they show the in white and black manner. For example, uh, instead of uh, 8 hours duty or 40 25 year permanent job, actually, so they, they want implementing to they want implementing fixed term contract. Fixed term contract means actually uh, <coughs> so quantity of work works actually, manufacturing work actually. It is one layer or six months or two years actually. Company or management wants this much, that much uh, quantity of uh, manufacturing. That is the main criteria for the fixed term contract. According to contract, according to work, according to uh, production, uh, they are go going to pay wages. This is a very uh, dangerous. This is the first time in Indian uh, working class. This is a plain attack on the Indian working class. Second thing is the uh, so in court, uh, on court, there was a debate in the government website and uh, advertisement. Uh, discussions uh, with uh, new labor code, uh, code on social security benefit also very wonderful, very beautiful, and it helps the working class. But in uh, write ups, in uh, what they accept in write up regarding social security benefit, actually they first uh, uh, attack on the provision uh, funding. So, according to existing provision fund act, act, the employee contribution is 12 percent. So, employee contribution is 13 percent. So, now, according to new labor uh, code on social security bill, the employee's contribution is 10 percent. They are probably doing their highlight. The home paid salary of the workman is uh, increased. <laughs> In the name of increasing, home take salary, they want to reduce the employer contribution, provincial contribution. When the employer contribution is 10%, naturally employer contribution is 10 or 11%. This is the uh, attack in the labor uh, social security benefit. So along with this actually, <coughs> Uh, in the, regarding industry sector, the uh, interpretation or definition on the in, industry. So, according to new uh, labor law, uh, industry means a criteria. So, up to this time, actually, industry means the, the industry is under people, under workmen. According to the the manufacturing industry, uh, factory, factory with 300 work. Less than 300 workers in the factory, that is not a factory, that is not an industry. This is a very serious thing. Now, the production system in the international level, national level, in every sector, in especially manufacturing sector. Uh, nowadays, the uh, centralized Manufacturing is uh, not existing. In almost manufacturing sector, the uh, all manufacturing in one umbrella, one umbrella industry are opposed by the capitalist, finance capitalist and corporate. So they want instead of one main or central or umbrella industry, they want ten. Uh, industry with uh, 100 people or 150 people. Up to this time, the factory with 100 people is considered as the industry or factory. Now, according to new labor code, actually, the factory definition means uh, the production is uh, more than 300 people. Using this uh, law, 
actually they are decentralization the decentralization of the manufacturing especially in automobile actually <coughs> previous up to this time and previous actually there was centrally manufacturing the spare parts parts of the old vehicle or automobile uh, they were the central manufacturing now the number of uh, decentralized uh, industry uh, they are producing spare parts of the automobile this is the main thing so another thing is uh, mainly uh, workers uh, the work condition and their wage condition workers want the struggle and the uh, wages and job security and livelihood so for that actually indian working class fight for a very long time they get the Legal opportunity and legal support for their collective bargaining means the right to <laughs> form the union, <clears throat> right to form the union, right to strike, right to union, right to speak. So uh, Indian Freedom Act 1926 and uh, Industry Dispute Act 1947. There are other acts actually uh, according to existing labour law. Indian workers have the Right to form the union, right to strike and speak, fight. But according to new industrial relation code, so these uh, rights are uh, cut down and removed. And uh, the rights of the collective bargaining of the workers are prevented very much. So right to right to strike also prevent right to strike also prevent so up to this time our existing labour laws especially essential uh, sector uh, before going the uh, union or worker uh, before going to the strike uh, they will uh, issue the fourteen days notice the existing act so fourteen Advance notice should be must. Now, after going to a new labour court, the two months previous notice is issued to the management or uh, operator. Other, this is openly shows actually. This is the severe uh, attack on the working class rights, right to union, right to strike, right to speak, right to collective bargaining, right to fight. This is a very severe. Take on the uh, left So, Alani is actually now Indian working people. The uh, strength of the analogous sector, strength of analogous uh, workers number is very, very, very big for them. Up to 2008, there was no a legal security for the analogy system in India. Only in 2000 days, the analogy sector workers act adapted in 2000 days. Except that there is no legal <coughs> security or protection to the analogy uh, worker. Even uh, if a uh, force and cross uh, workers in this sector, so without appointment, without paper, without record. So up to this time, there is no except one act sector, another sector, uh, workman, at different ways, there is no other protection, legal protection. But now, so according to new labor code, actually, so uh, these unarmed, once applied these new labor codes in the uh, sector, the energy workers became a place. There is no legal security or bargaining given in a in a only opportunity now the central government uh, and the state government also their job, their duty or their uh, 
uh, successfully lead the any uh, uh, even local sector. For example, uh, in any state, in any sector, fight for the wages for the worker. That cannot be possible. Because in every sector, this dampest labor system is rampant. Already, in a number of sectors, especially the automobile sector, this fixed uh, term quarter system is already sorted. First, we should understand the uh, economic interest of the police. Put forward by the BJP and the river. This behind uh, this new labor law, so there is an implementation of labor liberalism. Without fighting neoliberalism, we can't fight the new labor labor. This is a very, very, very important part. So, uh, who are working in the trade union movement, the workers movement, especially the Muslim sector, they must have the political pool. They must have the class pool, working class politics against neoliberal politics. Against the corporate capitalist system, all capitalist system. So, this is the situation. Now, you know, the spreading of soft arm fascism or propagating Hindu Rasta, building Hindu Rasta, the main program of Sanjay uh, Parivar is implementing all pro corporate economic policies in all over India in each and every sector. This is the, the, this is the main uh, interest of the Indian Buddhist class. So they are, they are saying, they are uh, propagating communal, caste, and uh, their own national uh, definition. So in their main economic political policies are serving the information, foreign capital, foreign finance, corporate capital, Indian Emperor capital or corporate system. So, regarding this, actually, other parties have Congress, so any uh, regarding this issue, Congress have any alternative or any regional party have the alternative. Alternative means who are totally opposing neoliberal. This neoliberal policy, uh, relation between the neoliberalism and the uh, new labor is very close, interconnected directly, without defeating the so, neoliberalism, without fighting the neoliberalism, we can be able to fight the new labor. This is the main understanding. With this understanding, and uh, first actually, the unity of the work, work, work is all national level, national level, central region, sector wise. Uh, Trade unions to come out with a common uh, slogan against this new labor force, along with again, they should have the position against new liberalism. Now, the, there was a division. Some people are rising their weight against only Hindu Swarashtra or Sangha Parivar or their nationalism. So, we must correctly understand the relation between Hindu fascism and neoliberalism. Hindu mm -hmm. fascism and neoliberalism is two sides of the same coin, same thing, same class interest. That is the capitalist interest, that is the corporate interest, that is against the Indian working people, Indian working class. We must understand in this aspect and unite the uh, build up the all India platform, real struggling platform for the Maybe after next election, so after some time, this attack also increasing, more increasing. Sadly, they are going to put this uh, corporate loss in the implementation. Once they legally put, the, put the, this corporate loss in the practice, then the situation is very bad, very dangerous. Before that, actually, so we should understand the present situation. 
Indian, so all Central Trade Union who are opposing neoliberalism, who are opposing communal eco fascism, Sangapari War, who are opposing corporatization of the industry, who are opposing the system contract system, they come out, they get together. They build actually, so struggling platform for the Indian working class. So through long run struggle, wider struggle, continuous struggle, this is the so uh, uh, fascist government, this is the fascist uh, labor law. This is a very important challenge. And now, uh, so the center of India, we're trying to build a uh, common platform, first class platform for fighting. And uh, uh, we're actually uh, participating in a different struggle, uh, different sector ways and different states. So now that I request the comrades who have the experience with the trade union working class movement, they should uh, think seriously. One, one thing I want to uh, 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 here, the depoliticization of the Indian workers. Compared to peasantry, farmers, the, the politic, political level of the political level or political understanding of the Indian working class is very low. This should be considered. Self-critically, all leadership, all leading leader, leadership, who wants revolution, who wants sacrifice for the revolution, who wants to build the working class movement, for working class liberation and people's liberation, they must understand, they must directly gauge in the Indian proletariat have the very lower political understanding due to economicism, due to legal Marxism, due to economicism, due to legal Marxism, due to legalism, we, we are losing the revolutionary or class politics within the working class. Now, that is, that is really help to the ruling class, our corporate capital, our corporate uh, operation. So even compared to Adivasi, Adivasi are organized, organized. They write their wife against the uh, Modi, or corporate class, their criminal class. Women are some in the streets. Husbands are struggling. After the historic uh, fashion women, still peasants are resisting. But what is happening? What is the problem with the working class? The problem is not with the working class. The problem is the leadership who leading the Indian, who have the, who leading the Indian working class. They, they, they are losing the class position. First thing is how to police the Indian working class. This is the, the basic cost. Based on this cost, so mobilize the working class, build the national level platform for struggling against this corporate attack, combat corporate attack, and uh, so fight until reject the this four new uh, labor force and defeat the fascist zone. This much from I want to present for the world. <laughs> Hello? 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, comrade. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, comrade, uh, for your speech on the subject. There are two, three questions, general questions, uh, has uh, sent to my WhatsApp. The first thing, uh, one, one question from uh, Doha, uh, one comrade friend. Uh, during the historical farmers movement, they were struggling against uh, three uh, farm laws, corporatization of agriculture, and three uh, farm laws. They, they made a historic struggle, and uh, at least they blocked the uh, fascist government's move uh, in that direction. At the same time, 
uh, there are similar kind of uh, labor code is uh, made by the uh, Modi government. Even that time, so farmers also requested the working class or trade union uh, to come for a united struggle. So there was a very historically very important uh, uh, situation was there while uh, farmers were struggling. Uh, why this trade union or united trade union to be uh, to join with the farmers, not only for the farmers' cause, but for the working class cause also, especially on uh, uh, dangerous uh, for labor court uh, reformation. So, what was the, um, uh, the delay? I mean, uh, why the trading, uh, trade union leadership did not go for that way? And what was the position of trade union center of India, which you are the one of the national leaders? This is a one question. So, Comrade, this is a very, very important question. Uh, Comrade is asking. It's a very important uh, question before the uh, working class leaders. So, uh, Trade Center of India, we have the organization struggle in different uh, states and different states. We fully support. Uh, independently fully support with the historical farmers movement. But that is, we are not satisfied. We are not uh, satisfied with that effort. So after the historic farmers uh, struggle, what is the role of Indian working, working class? That is the main thing. I already told that. So superficially, there are one or two problems. The central trade unions with their political party. So CAT with the CPM, APC with CPI, some ASC with the liberation, like the partisan uh, column. The main column is the main central union recognized the uh, workers' issue. They have not recognized the politically uh, new liberal onslaught on the India, mainly classes, farmers and workers. That's why you already I uh, spoke. India, Indian work class very large, not just in the strength, very big compared to the China Revolution, compared to the Russian Revolution, any revolution up to this time which was held. The number strength is a very big, but the understanding, the political understanding of the Indian working class is very slow. What is the problem? Due to the non-politics. Economism, legal Marxism, mechanical Marxism. That is why actually the whole Central Union have the platform for a call nearly one September, October, one day. That is a name call actually. But still, in that call actually, it goes and goes actually. In 2017 or 18, there was all in India call, September call by the Central State. The participation of the workers number is 18 crore, 20 crore. No central union or no central platforms are clear, clearly, they don't want exposing the uh, new liberal policy. They don't want political struggle like this. But do you say? According to Tisha and our experience, actually, we want to prepare the working class as a political class, actually, as a political force. Without building the working class as a political force, leading the struggle or defeating the anti labor laws or neoliberalism, no revolution in India, the world, actually. That is the main problem. Now all reactionary forces, NGOs, reactionary forces, taxes, communal forces are engaging among the working class. They are propagating their reactionary politics. They are propagating their NGO politics. They are propagating their identity politics among the working class. We are not propagating, we are not ready to propagating our class politics among our class actually. This is the main reason. We must rectify. In this way, so you say 
want actually uh, restart the uh, political movement. So in coming November, actually, first we were going to five days uh, uh, national programs campaign, especially in Delhi against this new labor for science fascism. And we want to invite the old central federal leader. November first week, we are going to organize the Dharna in front of the parliament of Delhi. We want to invite the, we have the plan for invite the old central federal leader to speak. What is the problem? This is the situation. First thing is update the working class. Politically update the working class without updating politically working class, no working class movement like farmer This is the question. Thank you, comrade, for the clarity and clarifying the question. And another question, uh, comrade Sun. Uh, yes. Regarding the last three decades, or uh, more than three decades of neoliberalism and the corporate attack on the working class, the working class has been um, largely uh, disintegrated, unorganized sector. Only 3% or something like that is the organized sector. Now, a huge proportion is unorganized sector, especially uh, during the lockdown time. This was exposed the migrant workers of uh, cores of migrant workers all over the country was so struggling and they were not organized and they are not a force of organized working under the work class. So what is the plan uh, for organizing this unorganized huge proportion of unorganized sector uh, either by any the whole working class union or any specific target from so, so now actually we have the plan, we have the program for uh, building the unorganized sector, along with the organized sector. Now the unorganized workers number is increasing. So in effect, uh, in every sector, all permanent workers are they are losing their permanent nature of work and they become a contract labor. Contract labor become a casual. This is a deep promotion. After pandemic, after two years pandemic, in a highly industrial area, lakhs and lakhs permanent employees losing their permanent jobs actually. They are shifting to other places. For that, actually, you should have the uh, program, campaign, and uh, forming the uh, uh, broad union, state level, national level, sector wise union. For example, actually, migration workers. In India, the number of migration workers is not more. Very, very big. For them, there is no single union or single sectoral union with any central union. Maybe, uh, namesake, uh, anybody have the separate union. For migration, all India migration workers, you know. Like actually plantation work, even construction, construction and building. Now actually we are uh, thinking about the sector, uh, means actually there is the industrial sector. Now this is the social sector now. Agricultural laborers, they are losing their jobs in the villages. They uh, reach the so urban areas. They are living in the slums. They are the contract laborers of the building. Not only that, actually, I want to say a small example. In Bangalore, actually, there is a Toyota Kirloskar, the car manufacturing, highly car manufacturing industry. Total strength is, total workmen strength is actually nearly six to seven thousand. Somebody has actually five years back, the permanent worker strength is more than four thousand. 
two to three thousand actually contract labor. Nowadays, what is happening? Now actually, permanent workers strength is thousand five hundred. Contract labor strength is five thousand five hundred. Poor are you asking? In each and every industry, you should study. For that, actually, the task of the central trade union to build the union, national level, state level, social sector level for emerging workers is very important. Task. Now we open the for the uh, plan positions uh, with like men courses. Yes. So, uh, comrade, now uh, one last question from me. Um, as a working class uh, leader, a struggling working class leader, you have been directly involving and leading the many massive struggles, especially in the mining sector, irrigation uh, industry, and the automobile industry, uh, like that. Uh, many uh, big struggles you have been leading. So what is your, uh, your those experience of those struggles? What is your uh, analysis on the, or the, uh, the, the workers' movement? How it will be growing, or what will be the what are the main obstacles for the growth of the working class in this uh, through the struggle? So, yes, this is a very important uh, issue for practice. So we have the, uh, some experience in the struggle. Our work, the building the working class movement, uh, there is a legal platform, and another one is the Maida ground. But actually, up to this time, mainly the trade union struggle means the legal part. According to establishment, now, now that is understanding. Some tripartite meetings, two-party meeting, consultation, some tribunal. We must want that legal opportunity platform for the women, but that is not sufficient. My experience is, and means TVC experience in Karnataka and other states. We organize the even irrigation worker. We start the union with the irrigation workers in 2000. We uh, start writing that, uh, ask the wage uh, revision social security benefit and uh, other security. But authority or management or government is not provided in legal way. Then we uh, push in the street struggle. We are receiving the notice, we start the street struggle. Dharma, we are mobilizing the Dharma. 57 days Dharma. City bank, sector bank, actually. Actually, once in we are moving towards the uh, struggle in the Maidan. Actually, we must face the case of police. Same thing, we will get the wonderful results. After 72 days struggle of the Tungabhadra workers, we get the wage revision. We are sitting in the Maidan. The wage revision was issued by the state government. The state government sent wage revision order copy to our struggle. Uh, place. Like now uh, in Karnataka, Tata Marco Polo worker. Tata Marco Polo, Marco Polo from Brazil, Tata from Indian corporate, the joint venture, first manufacturing. We have the union, the Tata Marco Polo, Kantikari, Karmika Sang. From last two months, we are in the struggle. First, we are completing that legal, the negotiation, conciliation, but no government, no management or respect or recognize the legalism. They want legal uh, the mic, your mic, comrade, your mic is not on. It's muted. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. So they weren't doing 
then now the uh, tata workers uh, where is the struggle regarding tata workers wage increment from last two and a half years there is no wage revision we ask you actually minimum wage revision then tata management is not ready to discuss our tackle we held 70 or 80 round discussion after that actually we spot the dharna jata and street fight now we are in the street fight we hope that we must create condition we must organize the politicize the organize the workers for actually street struggle otherwise actually now the only depending upon the legal platform or labor industry or consultation is not possible that is a problem with the main problem nowadays we must depend upon the street struggle now the our uh, farmers heroes shows once again the streets are the real place for struggle courts are the once upon a time courts are the places now the courts are not <laughs> courts are not running judges are not sitting councils are not elding governments are not issuing interim relief to the workers they are not totally overlooking they are totally opposing existing labor law the labor department main task is sabotage the existing labor law or helping the management or corporate in this time actually nowadays we must actually we have the experience with mobilizing struggling fighting with the police fighting with the management and inside the jail return back from the jail force the open street war uh, struggle uh, is very very important nowadays then only we attract the uh, support from the other sections upper sections uh, in society to the uh, work cluster yes sir uh, uh, thank you comrade for uh, your uh, valuable input in this series uh especially highlighting the um, uh, core political content uh, on the corporate attack on the working class as well as uh, uh, political uh, task of uh, working class uh, as, as, as part of class struggle against the corporate nation uh, let us uh, continue the struggle let us uh, lead the workers let us unite the workers Also, workers will create history. Working class will create history for a better tomorrow. Thank you, comrade. Okay, comrade. The working class is a theoretical weapon for the Marxism. Marxism is the so physical weapon of the uh, theoretical weapon of the working class. Working class is the physical weapon of the Marxism. We must yes. understand this relation. Thank you, comrade. Thank you, comrade. Thank you, comrade.